Just two days back, there was an announcement regarding this, and that made, and I had to change everything, all my content because of it, because now uh, Power Automate is more integrated within Teams, and um, I'll show you a bunch of things today on that. So, so the three topics that I said we'd be covering, uh, one is the Power Automate app in Teams, um, how to trigger flows from messages in Teams, and also I'll show some model flows, um, kind of the adaptive cards, how you can use along with kind of Power Automate and Teams together. And if we get the time, I know I only have 10 minutes, but if we get the time, I'll show you one of the use cases uh, that I use in my organization and how that helps me in um, optimizing one of the processes. So the first thing, let's jump into, as you can see my screen here, it's uh, the uh, the flow, or it's still called flow for some reason in my tenant, but I know in some tenants should show Power Automate. But if you don't have it yet, you should uh, you should be able to find it from your Teams. Um, kind of this three dots here, search for Power Automate or Flow, and you should be able to get that app. And once you get it, just right click on it and pin it so that you can use it as much as you want and it stays here on your uh, navigation pane. So one thing that I'm gonna try to do today is I'm not gonna go to the browser to show anything about a flow. I'll open all my flows right from here. So as you can see the home page, it shows you all the Microsoft Teams flows. So any flow that has a Teams connector in it, Teams action in it, shows up in this um, section. I can always filter it to all flows, but if I just want to see the Teams one, it's by default showing the Teams flows. So this is really good for you to kind of manage all your Teams flows from Teams rather than going to flow.microsoft.com. Another cool thing is you can create a flow from templates right from here. So, and it's not just a template very hard with it opens the, the flow and you add in details, but I'll show you one of the templates to create an approval and you'll see how easy it is to now create an approval flow right from Teams. So if I go to create, click on approval on the categories, you have different categories of templates here. And then I have a start and approval for new documents in Teams. So if I click on that, it gives me a name, so I'll just uh, option to edit the name. So I'll just say demo, and it has all the connectors already. I've created the connections, so I don't need to create those. I can just click on continue, and as you can see, it asks me all these things right over here. I don't have to open the flow or anything. I I just choose my SharePoint site, the library name, which I'll choose as documents. I'll just keep it to documents. If I want to dig into a folder, I could have, but I'm not going to do that here. And then I'll just choose myself here to assign the approval to. So once I've selected these three or four inputs, I just click on Create Flow, and that's it. You have an approval flow now. And when you add a document to that documents folder, it will run. I didn't have to even go into the edit mode or anything, it just runs. And I'll just show you a quick example here. Uh, yeah, so I've been doing some testing here, but basically this is the one. So, so this flow ran when I had added a document on that documents folder. So if I want to, I can go back and edit it in advanced mode, but otherwise all these templates that you see here there are around 50 optimized templates that you can start using now, but you just need to add a few inputs and it will create the flow for you. You don't even have to go into the editing mode to do anything. Of course, if you need to add some more custom stuff, you can always go into the advanced editing mode, but otherwise you need to create something simple. It's, it's super easy to do it from here. So, Going ahead, uh, let's just look at how you can trigger flows from, so this is one way. I mean, you can definitely create flows, you can manage flows from here, but what are the other ways that you can use Teams and uh, Power Automate together? So if I go to um, one of my channel here, I can choose one of these messages. 
click on the three dots, click on more actions. And you can see there are two things that, are, that pop up, create a task and there's some other flows that I've created. So basically I can trigger a flow from a message in Teams. So I can click on create a task. This will basically ask me for a subject. I'll just say test and I'll choose a due date 19. So this is an adaptive card that I, I'll show you in a second year how you can create it with, uh, with a flow. If I click submit, it will create a task, and that's it. I, I mean, it's as easy as that, and it will take a reference to the, the task as well, uh, to the message, so that I can go back and look at the task. Um, so let me show you the flow that ran behind it, so that we can have a quick look at that. On that approvals flow you created, who mm -hmm. are the actual approvers? I choose the approver as myself on that. So that was one of your input yeah, fields? Yeah, that was one of the input fields, yep. So the task one is this one. So for the flow getting triggered from messages, your the trigger has to be for a selected message. So that's, that is this one. Um, on that, you have an option to edit adapter card. So this is really cool. You can click on edit adapter card and I it opens up the adaptive card designer for me. And if you have not used this uh, yet, Adaptive Cards, I'll definitely recommend you to check this out. Uh, you can go to adaptivecards.io to check out this designer and some other samples as well. But I created a simple one with a and text input and a date input so that I can add a task subject, add a task view date, and hit submit. So I can add more fields here. I can edit the whole Adaptive Card but let me show you what happens next. So I have a create a task action, uh, which creates an Outlook task. So the subject is from that adaptive card. Um, so it gives me all the, the inputs that I created in, in the adaptive card to use in the subsequent action. So I can see all those things here. The other thing that gives me is the link to message. So in my body of the task, I have added a link to message, which will basically, if I click on that task, it will give me a link to open the message in Teams so that I have a reference to go back and look at it. I can also include the message content itself. So if you're wondering why can't I just copy the Teams message into the adaptive card, it will be there, but it will be there in this task uh, body content. Another best practice would be to add another adaptive card and give a confirmation to the user, because right now when I create submitted it, it didn't give me anything but you could add another step there to, 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 sh to give a confirmation to the user that the adaptive card was created. So I know I have maybe, how, how am I doing on the time, Todd? I think you got about two left. Okay. Uh, so I'll show you another one. Actually, I wanted to, sh so there are some samples in here. So these references are there in the, I've added these in the resources. There are a bunch of uh, model flows, adaptive cards for like candidate feedback, uh, lead collection, all those kind of things. So you can use these as well in your flows if you wanted to either start from a message or from, a, I mean, you could have any trigger here, but these are easy to use adaptive cards. You don't have to create the whole code yourself. You can just copy paste from here and create it. So let me see if I can show that quickly. Uh, not there was that yeah, lead collection. So we will run this. Let me just quickly check. Yep. So this one also can run from a message. So I've just used the trigger as message. So only if I can get it quickly. Click on the three dots. More actions. Lead collection. Flow. So here it asks me all these details. Uh, I can add these and hit submit. And it will, I mean, right now I'm adding it as a contact uh, in my CDS or Dataverse uh, database, uh, but you can add this to anywhere uh, in your flow. Um, so the last thing that I want to show was one of the flows that I use on a regular basis. We create in our CRM, in our company, we add new accounts almost every day. That's linked to our Oracle. 
But one thing that we try to do is we add the latitude and longitude information for these accounts. But if they don't have a, I mean, so based on the address, we try to find that lat long. And then we surface that in a Canvas app for our salespeople so that they can find nearby accounts. So every time a new account is added, it triggers a flow to find the lat long based using a Bing's map API. If the confidence is low, it sends me a notification on Teams uh, like this one. As you can see, it shows me the account address and it also have added an option to, to show the Google map kind of image so that I can kind of confirm if the location is right or not. So it sends an, a notification to the account manager on that account, so basically the owner of the account, and they can confirm that, okay, either approve it or reject it, uh, they can need also open the account in CRM. So it's, these are like URLs uh, to open the account in uh, uh, the model driven app. So this is another use case that I just wanted to show how we are using Teams uh, with Power Automate. So I guess I covered everything. I, have, uh, uh, I hope this helps in kind of understanding what all this Teams and Power Automate offer you together and you should be able to use it more in more different ways Thank you. That was really <laughs> nice. I, there's a lot of chat about actionable cards inside of there uh, in the chat. I expect you might get some follow-up questions there too. I think it opened up a lot of eyes on how you can extend those flows and using those cards. Really well done. Thanks again for showing that to us, Vivek.